Okay, hi, Sebastian. So uh, just to introduce you to the audience, you are Sebastian Grosjean from Booking Sync and uh, also from Smiley now. Can you tell us a bit about you know, your company and yourself? Sure, hi, Luca, thank you. And hi, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I'm the CEO and founder of Booking Sync and also Smiley now. So uh, Booking Sync is a vacation rental software. So it goes from well, property management to channel manager, website builder, booking engine, uh, marketplace. So we have an app center as well. So it's pretty much a full featured solution and also very easy to extend. And uh, booking thing has grown to be a solution that is ideal for property managers of 20 properties up to a couple of thousand. Okay. And uh, that's where we saw the need as well for a solution to, for the small property owners. And so uh, that's something we wanted to do from day one. So uh, the, the code actually for Booking Sync started about 10 years ago. So uh, in like next month will be 10 years. That's we're okay, here for a while now. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so Smiley is a solution that's made uh, specially for the property owners or for the small agencies. So usually one to 10, one to 20 properties. Okay. And it's a solution that is extremely simple. So it's like, even simpler than listing on Airbnb, except that you get on a thousand platform. So it brings you to Airbnb, booking.com, on the way, all the big ones, but also a lot, a lot of small ones, niche market. Uh, so it makes it very painless to have a massive reach. So, uh, yeah, because most channel manager or PMS, uh, so property management systems, tend to kind of ignore the really small guys because they, I guess, they, they require a lot of, customer service for little money. And so what you're trying to do with Smiley is to, is to serve this maybe unserved market, is that correct? Yeah, we try to approach every option really and to make sure that you will always find the right guests for your property. So we know some specific properties have a certain way to advertise them or certain niche market will work better for them. Uh, so we really try to get the best partners for everybody so they get the best customers, the best return. Uh, How but do you also get the best customer? You get the best customer because you put them on the right platforms, the right niche platforms? Yes, through okay. this one for sure. And also through the right settings. So to make sure, well, for example, uh, it's a common one, but just to say that, okay, you don't accept uh, big parties or events. Right. So, okay, to make sure that, okay, you will not be on a website that is just for events. Okay, how, how do you fix that by the fact that most bookings come from big, uh, like two or three big OTAs? Uh, you're trying to push more the smaller ones. That's very interesting because, you know, it's be, being able to get compatible customers, I think is really important for your business. So how, how, do, you do, mm -hmm. how do you deal with this almost monopoly of the big OTAs? Yeah, well, I, I believe it's a matter of time as well. So a lot of the niche channel now need to take off again, I would say. They had a lack of quality inventory for a lot of time. Right. And so with our collaboration, we helped to rejuvenate these aspects. Okay. And so the other fact is, as they are very specific, they still have a very targeted audience. They just need very targeted properties. So if you bring the right properties to this channel, they are able to get the bookings. So this okay. is the second point. And the third point I see is that most of the time they are cheaper. So when you provide a property to Smiley, you really don't have to do anything. You don't choose where you are distributed. We handle all of that for you. But we also handle all the pricing, I would say, the pricing increase for you as well. Okay. So you tell us how much you want, we'll make sure you get what you want. And so as the biggest channel are usually more expensive, when we push you to a niche channel, they become more competitive. So if you also include meta search into this or Google right now, it means that you will soon have this niche market to get back on top of the game and leads to more and more bookings as we go. Okay, so you see, um, you see in the future uh, like renaissance of smaller niche websites. Is that correct? Is that, is that, that's your expecta expectation in a way, right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Especially niche ones, yeah, specific topics. Okay, because the big OTAs don't deal well with niches. Like, let's say I'm, I'm a family with, with a dog, so I've got two mm -hmm. niche aspects. It's hard to, to book through 
the big OTAs and it's better to go in the small ones? I believe the big OTAs do a good job about it. Um, however, I think a niche market specific in your case uh, for this example about traveling with a dog, the niche market will be able to give you a much better service. So not only the properties that are filtered by this uh, particular need, but they will also be able to tell you, okay, here's what you can do with your dog. Here is some parks that are dog friendly. Here is some lakes where it's nice to be able to go with your dog. Here is okay. some community about dog lovers. So you can okay. go and exchange. So you can bring much more content, much more improved experience, I guess, uh, around a particular topic. Uh, I keep asking about this because it's very interesting from our point of view and I'll tell you later why. Uh, how, how do you see this? These are smaller companies, of course. How do, you get, do they access funding? Is the, uh, the venture capital world ready to invest in these kind of companies or do they have other kind of fundings like I don't know, crowdfunding, etc.? cetera? How, how do you see them getting the money to, to get the mission done? It's a good question. So for the ones that are already existing, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, however, there's one thing that I'm very happy to share today even though it's not fully public on our side, but we also finish the technology to generate this platform. So we can actually help anybody that wants to generate such a strong niche market to get them off the ground for pretty much nothing. Okay, so, so they have, they, a, they, to, to they have a share. website builder basically, right? Like a, plat a marketplace builder, would you call it? Yeah, it's a marketplace builder, I would say, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so it's the, the old portal. The cost of launching something is going down basically because they can. Yeah, it's close to nothing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, the reason I'm asking a lot about this is because one of the strengths of uh, the whole blockchain ecosystem is in the ability for smaller players to launch exactly mm -hmm. in the way you described their own specific niche market with very low cost. So I get there maybe a bit later to this, but let, let's start from one question for you. Uh, what do you know about the blockchain? Because one of the reasons I'm doing these interviews and these chats is I want to understand where the industry stands on the blockchain uh, situation and if we can help. So what kind of pain points you have and to see if what we're doing is actually going to be a solution or not. So my first question, blockchain, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> in your opinion like well, you don't need to explain opinion, to me what is it but like what's your position today on the blockchain okay sure yeah. but from my point of view it's a it's a decentralized database and so that brings the benefit of not being dependent or owned by a single party and so the huge benefit i see of such a system so that's that's one part of it that's and the huge benefit I see is that a very qualitative inventory could be stored on the blockchain and accessed by any partner and to be able to be booked or to be improved or extended with whatever services, whether that's a PMS, whether that's a keyless system, whether that's a payment solution, no matter the system, I think it can plug to an inventory that is publicly available and have the right access control. Okay. I think you got one of the most interesting parts of the blockchain, right? Which is basically open inventory. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, 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 great. And um, um, yeah. Yeah, the second side that I see, and I believe it is important as well, is all around what well, smart contracts we could say, or there is multiple definitions depending on which technology you use underneath, but definitely the contractual aspect. So to make sure that everything is set in stone and it's not about to get, well, removed, altered, changed. And so that can be very helpful for anything that is payment tracking, accounting, contracts. Uh, all of that, I think, can bring a very strong value. Reviews, of course, so to make sure that reviews are legit and that we know for a fact that they are stored for the right way from the right person and so forth. Okay. That's another, another good aspect. Right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I always insist on this because I had this epiphany maybe not more than a month ago about the fact that the reviews being on the blockchain, it changes everything in an incredible way. I mean, look at this today. 
you, if you are a host or a property manager, your reviews are hosted by third parties. And most of your reviews are in Booking.com or, or Airbnb or some other OTAs. Mm -hmm. And reviews for you are an asset. Suppose you have a thousand sure. of them, right? You cannot, you don't have the, 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 the rule of law to protect your asset because they belong to the platform. So if tomorrow morning Airbnb closes your account, and this luckily happens very rarely, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very rare and extreme situation, but still, just the fact that tomorrow they could close your account and all your reviews are gone makes you working on somebody else terrain, right? Uh, you, yep. you have an asset, you work hard for the asset, but it doesn't belong to you, right? And every business decision becomes a bit more like risky because you don't have any assets. The moment you move these reviews on the blockchain, they don't belong to you as a host, they belong to the guests because they write them, right? You, you can't, mm -hmm. let's say, forbid the guests from canceling them. But you know, if you have a thousand reviews, what are the chances that a thousand customers will cancel their reviews? I mean, pretty, pretty much close to zero, well, that, right? That's a good point. At this, at this stage, I would say the review belongs to the guest and to the host. As long as it's submitted to the host, I guess it becomes a shared ownership. Yeah, but they are, let's, let's say held all stage by the OTA because the content was produced by the, the guest it refers to a listing and a reservation to the of the host, but because yes. the system is centralized, it's in the hands of the OTA, which had an important part, of course, of course, in making the review. But the question is, should they own it? Should they? Should there not be a way for me to export these reviews and make them alive? The problem is, if I take these reviews and I put them on my own website, they lose any value because nobody will trust me as a host to keep these reviews real and to change them, delete the bad ones, keep the good ones, etc. What the blockchain brings in, and this is extremely important, it says you can put them on the blockchain and they are as trust, trustworthy as the ones on the OTA. That completely changed everything in my mind. It makes, it makes, it opens a whole new set of scenarios. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I fully agree. It's a beautiful idea. It's a, it's a beautiful place to store them. And a uh, matter of fact, that's what we already do with Booking Sync. So, for example, with uh, HomeAway or all the HomeAway network, Booking Sync is collecting the review on behalf of the host. So, we keep the ownership to the host. And we are able, thanks to the partnership we have with the HomeAway network, to send it back to HomeAway. And so, HomeAway is accepting to do that already. So, to take these reviews as it was theirs but even though to keep the ownership to the host. And so that's thanks to the partnership that we were able to make with them. And we are looking to get the same level of partnership with all the other vacation rental websites, big ones, all the OTAs. Uh, but indeed, storing this on the blockchain is, is a, it's an even better place. That brings an extra level of trust uh, for the travelers and that keeps the ownership to the host and the travelers. And I think it's a, it's a very beautiful, application of the technology uh, th think about also like suppose that you are you have a thousand reviews you don't ha on trips right your trip mm -hmm. starts you start getting reviews and you have a thousand reviews on trips and then trip says okay you're out of trips this may happen maybe you're a bad host you do bad things and we mm -hmm. kick you out and first of all is it, you're being kicked out by the, net, the network by the community not by the company so not by me but you are kicked out, you keep your reviews and you go on another thousand, thousand platforms, thousand niche platforms. So the fact that one platform kicks you out doesn't cancel your reviews. So you stay yeah. on another thousand. So your risk really goes down. And I think this is really important for anybody in, in the market. It, it brings back kind of the, it gives you back the control of your own assets. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I would like to ask you, what would be your, uh, again, trying to understand if we're going to be something which can help you, what would be your most pressing problems today uh, for your own company in this environment? Because again, Trips is, is kind of proposing a completely new environment, not just a new web booking platform, a new ecosystem. In today's ecosystem, uh, would you like to share with us what are your most pressing problems? What would you like to see 
changed. Yep. So I would try to think globally. So whether that's for us or for the different actors that are mostly property management systems, uh, it could be channel manager as well. I think the biggest challenge is around the connectivity between softwares. So where you want to integrate with another channel, you want to integrate with another solution out there. Um, so far, there's no really any standard. There's a lot of normalization happening, uh, but it's still very difficult. Every new connection brings a new set of troubles and issues and maintenance to follow up and so forth. Everything is basically custom made. And I believe one of the big strengths than a blockchain based um, app center, I would say, or a centralized database for the inventory can bring is more and more a normalized way to plug and play tools to a single endpoint, basically, to a single platform. And one of the things that I see the most important on this being on the blockchain is so far there's a lot of people that have tried to do that. As far as I know, at least, we were the first one to introduce this model of apps within the vacation rental space. So we did that with Booking a couple of years ago. Now it seems to be pretty much a trend. Pretty much everybody is adding these apps. Now we see also the OTA adding it. So Booking.com is having their own marketplace. Airbnb has it. They don't push it too much. Uh, Home Away also has it. They don't push it too much. The problem I see when these parties do it, or even we do it to some extent, the problem is that this is belonging and the ownership or the management of this platform is still from a single company. When you put that on the blockchain, it becomes an open source management, or at least that's how I do see it. And that becomes a responsibility of the community to make this connectivity as simple and maintainable as possible and as neutral as possible. And I think the neutrality, so there is no BAs, is extremely important. And that's where the blockchain can play a big, big role. So you mean we are missing a standard, basically, which, you know, to, to transport information about vacation rentals mm -hmm. everywhere. How are we going to get the standard like this? Do you think you know, the company has to sit down in Davos or somewhere and sit down and, and make this big meeting and write the standard? Or how do you see this happening? Or how would you suggest the, the industry to move forward to this? And another question, does everybody want this? Why it hasn't happened yet? Yeah. So how are we going to do it? So I think there is... Well, definitely a strong level of partnership that would be important. Now, why it doesn't happen? Uh, I think every single company that is now in business is trying to get its way through. It's extremely complicated to do all this connectivity, yet that's also one part of the competitive advantage. Okay. So today, everybody is going pretty much in their own way and moving as fast as possible even though a lot of us are already contributing to each other and helping and communicating on what works best, how we can improve this, communicate it with OTA, what we recommend them to do. So this normalization is already happening. I would say it's more in the background. It's not maybe very public today, but it's moving forward. I know on our side, we are, and I know multiple companies are doing the same. We are acting as consultant for Airbnb, Homeaway, Booking.com and others for multiple years. And a lot of the recommendations we propose end up being applied and they bring huge value. Uh, we can now have perfect pricing on all of these three platforms and more and more I'm moving to it as well, thanks to the hard work we did over the last three years. And this happened on multiple areas. So I think this normalization and understanding about how to better transport this data, so to make sure that we're able to extract it from a platform transform it for another one and ship it to them so you can have different needs that are properly connected. This is happening. We should not forget as well that this is a, is a cash management. So in computer science, it's known to have very, two very hard problems, which is naming. So how you name things, which is very important also for this communication model, but also caching. So caching is really how a certain data is sent to a third party and especially expired so you know you have to pick it up again from the source all right okay. and so here it's really what we have to solve so it needs to solve some of the hardest problem of the computer science and it's happening and definitely i think the 
economy of scale, the fact that all the platforms become more and more mature, there is more and more founding in the platform. It can be more and more time spent on the community itself, on an open source system to get this done. And as well to have a decentralized, I would say not owned party that is able to do this. I think this notion of transparent ownership is extremely important as well. So we can get this developed and anybody can plug in and reuse the work of everyone that has been done. All right, so you, you say that, that that's theoretically possible. Uh, you know, technically is, is difficult, but possible, but there, is, uh, there are some interests which, which say, okay, uh, I'm not gonna use the standard of that company because that makes that company too powerful, right? So nobody's using standards, nobody's accept not everybody's accepting the same standard because that would mean put one company in, in power. Is that a good view of what you're saying, a good analysis? Mm, I might try to rephrase it a little bit. Right. I would say, just as an example, and I think they do an amazing job as well, but say Booking.com, everybody were to use a marketplace. It can be extremely beneficial and fast to do integration, yet it means that all the data that transfers to Booking.com is owned by the decision of what want to do Booking.com. And it can be the same for Airbnb or through Booking Sync is the same. Mm -hmm. And so I understand that this needs to have an ownership that is more decentralized, okay. that is more open source and driven by a community or committee, not by a private entity. Okay. And so I think this would bring a, a lot of value. Yet why I think is a challenge is that it needs a lot of investment in this platform that would be beneficial to everyone. So today, when you have a lot of companies that are dependent on venture capital, or yeah, there's maybe started to be some private equity, but I think it's mostly venture capital or seed money today in current businesses. Most of these targets needs is really through high quick return. Yeah. And therefore investing on something open source that is mid to long-term benefit and benefit as well to your competition is a long-term play. It's not something that is at least in my belief, a, a strong interest to a venture capital based company. Okay. Okay. I see. And so definitely at trip, I think there is some advantage because you see a lot of value in this decentralization model in this community on how to contribute to this. I know on our side, we are, we have angel investors. So we also don't have the same goals. We are looking for more medium to long term value. We are looking on how we can provide the most value to the industry and to the host. And so that's why we keep working on this. That's why all our APIs are public since 10 years, because we want to contribute as much as we can with the time that we have to say, okay, look, that's how we do. It seems work to be working great. If you want to apply the same, implement the same, please do it. I have seen okay. some complementary software or, or even competition that is using the same API as we do. And I'm like, well, this is actually great. It makes things easier. Okay. And I think growing this model, growing this ecosystem on the neutral party, I think is a very, very important thing and very beneficial for the industry. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I think we are getting, we are, we are right at, at the right moment for this kind of discussions because I don't know if, if you know, uh, TRIPS is based on uh, origin protocol. Origin Protocol is a company from California and they are building all these uh, protocols for the sharing economy on the blockchain, completely open source. They got good funding and they got real important names in, in them. Like there's a, an interview from a few days ago from uh, Steve Chen, the founder of YouTube, talking about the engineers working in Origin today. Uh, so what I want to say is that there is a company doing what we may be needing. And actually, they're going to look at this video because we are partners with them and we, we kind of uh, help them understand how to build everything for the, for the vacation rental market. Okay. Great. So this video is going to be seen by them too. And uh, oh, I, okay. I start to think, <laughs> I start <laughs> to think that uh, we may be at the, the, the right moment because now we're talking about, okay, let's integrate with some China management property management systems. Which ones shall we start with, et cetera, et cetera. But now you are the second person who brings up the standard issue. Richard Bolton did it a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And we may discuss now with Origin, why don't we try to push a new standard, which may be accepted because it's on the blockchain and it's open. 
and uh, so there is no risk that uh, trips or origin own the industry by doing that because again it's open so we're going to start a discussion about that and uh yeah they, they will be in the position to write this protocol this this standard in terms of being not a company which uh, is going after profit it's a uh, token based so it's mm -hmm. tokenized you know the blockchain so yeah okay let's let's discuss this uh, maybe also you know in other sessions if you have time even with them directly we may be at, at the verge of building finally a, a, a standard and we may be in the right position to, to start building the standard which I understand from you this is really important from the old, the old industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, I uh, so. that's very good. Okay. Uh, do you see any, any dangers in the blockchain, like the blockchain coming into this market or becoming a, an eco, a new ecosystem in this market? Do you see any dangers? Mm. So the personally, the philosophy of the blockchain, I love it. Okay. Now what I would question the most, and see as potential danger is around the maturity of it. So depending what type of blockchain you use and what type of technology on top of it, I could see multiple factors is one of them, the ecological impact. Personally, uh, if we check blockchain used for Bitcoin, for example, this is something that is extremely energy -bore. And so having everybody using Bitcoin for a daily basis transaction of the financials, I think could have a, a very strong negative impact on our ecology. Now we're looking at a different blockchain here for origin, yet there is still some consequences that has to be taken care of and see the cost of having a decentralized database and what it means as an ecological impact. I think we are in a state of our life where we have to have this social responsibility as well to our planet and make sure we do things that are also in line in this way. So that's one danger I can see. The second one is usually the trade-off that you want to do to be able to be less energivore might be at a cost of security. So making sure that the security is still extremely strong. As long as you have all this data that now we know is gold, that is exposed publicly, we need to make sure that they don't get basically decrypted and accessed by a third party that was not supposed to be. So the second one definitely I see is ensuring that security is extremely robust. So we don't have a leakage on what is the most important for any businesses. So from a host point of view, that would be the customer database. That would be all the booking history, all the financials. This has a very strong value and this needs to be protected. So that's the two main ones that I see. Other than that, uh, I, I see really just a lot of positive and I'm, I'm looking forward to see this coming. Okay, uh, I won't get into, I won't answer to this about the ecological impact because it's a very long discussion and I'm gonna leave a link uh, at the bottom of the, of the video for uh, you to look and other people to look. Uh, mm, thank you. It, it, it's not as bad as it looks. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, finger pointing on the blockchain because it's, it's a burning, uh, burning electricity. Uh, but there are answers to this. Um, and you were mentioning like other solutions, but no, I mean, in my view, we have to keep using proof of work. So you have to keep burning this energy. Mm -hmm. And the question is more about what is it for? Like if it's, if it's, if it's useful, of course, uh, it, it's a waste. But okay, that's a very long discussion. And so you don't see any danger for uh, vacation rental space, basically. You see only positives for that, okay? Yeah, if we look particularly for the industry, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's a very, very strong positive for the vacation rental industry. And do you have any doubts? Like uh, you said, it's the maturity. Yeah, that's, that's how you started your, your reply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is really early. Uh, it's, it's really at the infrastructure building moment. So there's no solutions really. I mean, we have this, we're using this... Uh, origin app now you can actually upload your apartment pretty easily uh, but there's no integrations yet uh, so it's a bit early to, to get bookings or to keep calendars and prices updated but so it, it is moving forward pretty pretty fast but yeah everything on the blockchain is a long-term thing nothing is going to happen uh, very soon so i wouldn't uh, i one of the dangers actually yeah, is to is to think it's mature because you see a nice app 
and then and then after a while I realized they've been ready yet so yeah uh, maturity is not there because the blockchain itself is still uh, yeah not ready for that okay. what um, timeline do you see I'm thinking in five to ten years um, I, okay. I'm thinking in like maybe next year there's gonna be a few bookings uh, from people who have actually cryptocurrencies and are happy to use them. Uh, there's gonna be credit card integration probably by next year, so more people are gonna get into this. Mm -hmm. um, but the underlying technology, in our case Ethereum, is not scalable yet. So I think to have something which is, uh, okay, it depends on what you mean for, timeline for what, right? So that next year there's gonna be bookings a little bit, there's gonna be a, a few websites. Uh, I think we need to go through a cycle of heavy funding for blockchain alternatives in the vacation rental. So one or two years more. Uh, I would say in five years, this is going to be probably pretty impactful. And one of the questions is here, how, we how do we define success? When I say we're going to do trips, which is like an alternative to Airbnb, people go like, okay, your plan is to kill Airbnb. And no, our plan is not to kill Airbnb. Our yeah. plan is to give an exit. Um, like, if you want an alternative which works, we want to give you that. And maybe for many years, only 10% of your bookings will come from blockchain-based solutions. Okay, that's an exit already. That's one of the biggest positive effects on the industry, for me, is it's not going to be visible. It's going to be transparent. What do I mean by that? By the very fact that now, and now I don't mean now, but like next year or two years from now, yeah. you can decide to get more bookings from the blockchain because you close your calendars for certain dates, like for the high season, for instance, on the OTAs. And you say, okay, now I'm pissed off. I'm going to get the high season. I'm going to get it only from the blockchain because I'm going to get bookings anyway. The mere fact that this is possible is going to affect the big OTAs and they're going to become a bit less arrogant. They're going to think twice before changing conditions and commissions, right? And so the biggest effort is things not happening. Maybe you won't get 20% commission from Booking.com because they say, okay, guys, we can't push it anymore. There's alternatives now. Yeah. And this is a known event. And nobody's going to say, oh, thanks to the blockchain because nothing has happened. You know what I mean? It, it's like mm -hmm. the fact that there's an exit is going to affect positively the, the big dynamics, okay? The, this is in uh, the shorter term. Yeah. I would go with a slightly different approach, personally, yeah. uh, but I think the outcome is, is the same. Um, I believe the OTA does an amazing job, and they definitely have a fee, um, but they've been able to, to come through. I mean, to see Airbnb growth over the last 10 years has been amazing. And they do an amazing job for 99.999% of, of what they do. And it's impressive. Now, I think what is the biggest challenge for more competition to come in is access to that inventory and quality instant bookable inventory. And so I think that's what the blockchain can bring. And the fact that this will naturally bring more competition to the market, that will make an ecosystem that is more organically living and we'll be able to grow with more competitive solutions and to be able to bring the best service possible to the travelers and the host. And I see this as a very strong value and it doesn't have to kill an OTA, as you mentioned, that's not the point, but it will rebalance the service and reposition each other's. And so they will be able to focus on, okay, what is their X factor? What makes them stand out? And they will be able to capitalize on that. But another one will be able to come in and capitalize on another it factor, like we see on niche markets. Right. And I think that would bring a very strong harmony for the host so the properties can be distributed widely. They can have a wide range of sources for the, for the bookings. Uh, and I think that would make everyone's business more sustainable. It will bring competition, sure. It's already there. But it will make it, I would say, maybe more fair and higher quality for the entire industry. Perfect. That's great. Um, okay, are you going to go into any event in the next month? Uh, yes, next week, next week I'm going to be at the Click event. Uh, so we will have a booth as well over there. What event is that? Uh, click by Booking.com. Okay. 
So it's uh, 10, 11 of uh, September. Okay. So I saw the event is sold out already. Yeah, they did a, they did a great job at promoting that one. Uh, been there last year as well. Nice event. Uh, it's a great place to meet a lot of the industry players, a lot of hotelier as well. Uh, and then the next event uh, that I will be personally attending will be Vacation Rental Web Summit uh, with okay. Antonio. That will be there, yeah, in Como. Right, right, great. 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 Okay. Look forward. Yeah, VRWS is an amazing event. I look forward yeah, to it. Yeah, it is. It is really amazing. It is really amazing. Really yeah. family feeling. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I really yeah. like it. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, Sebastian, uh, thanks, thanks so much for your time. And uh, well, okay. I'll, see you, I'll see you in a month or so in, uh, in Como. Excellent. Hello. Thank there. you. Have a nice day. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.